Caden says, what tools are you missing when trying to manage Office 365 or Microsoft Teams? That's a great question. It, I'm, I know that Microsoft is building and does a fantastic job at solving every problem. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft Teams can be mostly managed through the Teams Admin Center. Eh, uh, but some things do require PowerShell knowledge, yes, or scripting experience, definitely. Uh, what is your biggest IT management task or what pains do you have when trying to manage your enterprise users for Office 365 or Microsoft Teams? Hey, Jay, yeah. let me, uh, before you jump in, I know you have thoughts on that. It's like, mm. but I mean, uh, how important is PowerShell and scripting in the modern Microsoft 365 world? I mean, it's massive. Like hey, it's, it's so Microsoft will develop the end user experience fairly strongly and the admin experience to a point, but there, there are so many unique needs from organization to organization that it is easier to throw um, the, to give access through PowerShell than it is to develop the admin UI for every single task that's going to have to happen. So I, I, I will say that, that the, the comment um, there's, PowerShell, some PowerShell and, and scripting, I think is a, a vast understatement when it comes to really uh, in-depth management of your environment. Um, I would also say, so it's funny, SharePoint on-premises, back when SharePoint was its own thing, um, I always use the 80-20 rule for Microsoft's gonna develop 80% of the tool, and then it's up to you to develop the other 20%. I, and I think, with Office 365, that number has gotten a little bit more in favor of how much Microsoft's developing, 85, 90, whatever. But there's still always going to be stuff that isn't part of the, the UI. Um, and when it comes to admin, reporting is, is a huge thing. So most of my customers, US federal, big centralized tenants with tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people in them, and many, what used to in the SharePoint on-prem days be separated farms, now all in one environment. And when it comes to delegating the administration for your, for your let's say teams, if you want your, your contractor for this department to run, manage all of your teams, there's no good way to do it. Yeah. You're either making them a teams admin in which case they can manage all teams or you're making them an owner of every single team that belongs to your environment, which first kudos on you for figuring out how to do that and not missing any in an environment where anyone can create a team. But second, it's so easy for someone to get removed as owner that like, like to rely on that kind level of, of security is just, it, it, it's impossible. So that's, yeah. that's, yeah. I could go and on all day on, on this one. On, on that, I have to say, because I come more from the end user perspective, but I have my own tenant, yes, there's that base level, but for someone that's not technical like myself, it becomes mm -hmm. then an issue because I don't know any of that. I don't know the power scripting. I don't know. So, I mean, it also provides the platform for the partners, like for yourself with Christian and AppPoint, the partners yeah. to be able to build on it as a solution. And then those right. solutions often even get bought by Microsoft and pulled in, as we've seen with Yammer and as we've seen, you know, with lots of other things. So it's not like they're not bringing it in or building on it. But for someone like myself or even someone else, it'll also be, well, which solution adds and gives me what I want? And then that can be a harder question to find the right thing to put on right. top for me that's that's a big issue it's like i can't do the technical who do i rely on then for it yep we you know there's a whole another side of this like we could we could talk about uh you know like what's happening with multi-cloud and a lot of integrations so it's just getting more and more complex and there's areas which microsoft is not going to go and develop around and that's why you have an is uh, isv ecosystem mm -hmm. with solutions but the other side of this too i'm and i'm just going to read a little bit beyond what what caden's asking the, with the question um is that one of the things that's missing is a lot of the adoption and engagement aspects of it. You know, you're wondering, well, I can see that a certain number of chats are happening, a certain number of files are being uploaded, a certain number of meetings are being held. What's actually happening? 
And you have to go beyond what's in the admin center to really understand what's happening around collaboration and communication and organization, mm -hmm. which will have as much, uh, if not more of an impact on the success of your platform than just visibility into all of those things, the tooling. Yep. Yep. Now there's awesome third party tools that do that too, that do it better than the productivity score. So yeah. if you're really looking at granular information about who's doing what, yeah. you know, the productivity score gives you a little bit, but yeah. it doesn't answer a lot of questions. It can leave some pretty big gaps. Like I've got um, next Tuesday, I've got Swoop speaking at my user group around all of that and the analytics and how much further it goes and the reports, yep. and the benchmarking, the global, um, which is quite interesting on, you know, how that, how that actually works. So yeah, I mean, you got to take it to kind of the next level, but what does that, what does it look like? But they're the big gaps without a doubt, especially on that adoption side still. But yeah, then there's if, fever if, insights having come into play, but the cost yeah. of setting it up and so many people are going, oh, it's all just too hard at the moment. <laughs> and I'm sure that, you know, because we have as a regular on these sessions is, you know, Norm Young and occasionally John White, you know, uh, with uh, Tigraph. Tigraph you is know, right, yeah, with Swoop. And again, you know, can speak to this, but there's also, there's a reason why uh, Microsoft is rapidly expanding into the Microsoft Viva space and okay. looking at this because they're recognizing that for the long term, uh, you know, a, a success of these platforms of these tools that they also need to be looking at those those other topics, the adoption, engagement, the health and well-being of the employees that use the technology. So it's not always just about those activity stats. But is you know what's really happened is the next layer, the deeper layer. That's well, how many well, millions of programs the, have been run out and never been used. <laughs> Spent millions yeah. on it. So you know yeah. if you can, little things yeah, like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's it exactly. On the flip side of that, you've got the users going, "Is Big Brother watching what I'm doing?" <laughs> you know, so I well, mean, yes. you know, they're <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and the the recovering human resource professional on me is like going, "If you're not, if, if you don't want to be, know you're doing it, don't do it at work." Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, on that. You know, <laughs> Christian, bringing this back to the question, what are you missing when yeah. you're trying to manage um, something? Yeah, like, I'd something, like the second half of his question too. What's the biggest IT management tasks or pains? As yeah, well? governance, governance is th such a you know big one, really. But yep. it's funny, it's huge gap. Yeah. But it's funny because so for me in federal, there's no money for governance. Everyone complains about sprawl and they complain about the effort it takes to do things, but there's no money for that. There's a lot of money in security. And when you think of governance as a security tool, there's a massive gap in what you can do. For example, um, the openness that is Microsoft 365, Christian can go create a team. Kirsty, you can go create a SharePoint site collection. Uh, Sherry, you can go create a Yammer community. And there is no automation of the of the um, policies that are applied to those things. So, yeah. you know, Christian, if you create a team and you use that team to talk about employees as part of your legal investigation side of the business, mm -hmm. What's to keep me from adding the employee we're talking about into that team? Nothing. And so it's very manual to manage the policy enforcement of all of these workspaces. And, and it's, it's, a, it's an issue where we see a lot of scripting and PowerShell because you've got to figure out what's been created. Okay, who owns it? Okay, how is it being used? That's a big area. So automation is a huge thing that while there is a lot of automation capability, it takes a lot of forethought that a lot of people don't want to give. Yeah, and, and a lot of it's training the training the staff on the security, and you've yep. got to then make sure yep. they. Yep. And I, it's very, very rare, very rare. And I do, I do a ton of training. I don't get bought in to do that side of training and helping the users understand some of that best practice around security or asking those questions. Or so yeah, you leave a bit of a gap where the security relies on the user rather than on the business. Yep. One area, one big uh, management task is two, and and I I think it can be you could put it in either the security conversation, depending on where the dollars are for that you need to go and spend to get right. the work done, or over into the adoption side of things. But as around um, uh, provisioning and automation of the lifecycle management of the assets, which tie into compliance, which tie into security in in each of those different areas, but the 
you know, so there are a lot of third party solutions that help automate, I mean, all different aspects of that, but you know, the provisioning of that, that process, which tie into each of those areas. So it really is, uh, you know, I, as I always say that every new deployment, uh, any collaboration communication platform begins as a business analyst activity is to understand, you know, what is the culture of the collaboration environment that we're going to deploy this? Uh, and what are what are the tools that are being used? What are the, the needs, the outcomes for that? And as you're yep. going and designing each of those things, again, there's a lot of it, that 80% that Microsoft can do, but there's 20% and it's usually the, 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 uh, 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 the, more serious side is the the 20%. It's the uh, it, where all the risk really happens that you need That's to right. then go, you know, hired guns, go buy tools, buy bring in experts to help you build out and support those pieces for your organization. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot we can dive into in, on this <laughs> really topic. really is, yeah. <laughs> There is there's yeah. literally hundreds of hours of of webinars on on third parties and yeah yeah it's well there's just there are yeah there are uh, facets of the admin you know uh, uh, experience and so mm -hmm. it's really just okay which which area do you want to address what's your industry what are your requirements or the the outcomes nobody likes the word the requirements I'm old school I like that word still I like requirements. But yeah, there's there's a lot to cover. Great question, Caden. Yeah. If, if you're yeah. a fan of uh, Spinal Tap, it's also referred to as trouser marketing.